All right, we got to talk about how massive MLS is, where we weren't even playing at that time, and we saved a team from relegation. We don't even have relegation. We were able to save <laughs> team from relegation. That's how good we are. That's why we, we can't have pro rel because we were just yeah, saving we're, all we're the teams from relegation. Saving everybody else, man. That's that's spot on. Um, Leeds United, managed by American Jesse Marsh is playing for their Premier League life. And at the death of the game, if I just get the stats up here really quickly, in the 94th minute, Jack Harrison, former Chicago Fire draft pick, traded to New York City, scores the goal that saves them from relegation. Immediately after they're saved, two former players and Tyler Adams and Brendan Aronson are linked to Leeds United moves over the summer. Is Leeds just about to be MLS feeder system? I would oh. love for at Leeds to go be like 90% MLS and just continue to survive so we can finally answer the question, what happens when we put an MLS team in, in the Premier League? Because that's you know that's the old, the question they ever everybody asks is well what happens if we put them in the prem they're going to get relegated they score zero points well fight me what are your thoughts on uh, on first of all the survival uh, through simply just straight MLS power you know um, Jack Harrison clearly learned that at Manhattan PSG when I was playing against him uh, and then brought it all the way up to England to save a team from relegation. Um, what do you think about it? I am obviously happy to see Jesse stay up. Uh, I, a part of me wished it was um, staying up instead of Everton, seeing Everton go down. Uh, but that is just to see you be upset. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Um, great to see Leeds stay up. Great to see Jesse doing well. I'm trying to find a tweet because I remember looking at a tweet under uh, one of the ones that Leeds made where someone was talking about Marcelo Bielsa and be like, oh, Bielsa is better than Jesse Marsh or whatever. And someone brought up a stat or something that it was like, it was like points under Bielsa, like last 12 games or whatever. And then it was like Jesse's amount of points or wins or something in like the last six games. And he like outdid Bielsa already. Um, because I do feel like, and I know we talked about this when we talked with um, Corey about how like the American rep is in a lot of these English teams. And I don't think it stops at the players because I think when I see a lot of stuff about Jesse Marsh and Leeds, I see a lot of like uh, slack that he gets, I think, for for stuff that maybe other coaches like that, like a pep, like pep did it. Obviously, Pep wouldn't get the same slack, but I think Jesse gets it because he's American. And some of some of his stuff is definitely like corny American stuff. Like some of his speeches are super corny. Oh, American, did you did Ted you see Lasso the one type stuff? Did you see the one at the end when they won? He was like, "Everybody come in! Everybody come in! We're staying in the Premier League, gents." And he like yeah. raised it. it was like, "Oh man, Jesse, no." Yeah, Jesse's not doing us any favors in that regard, but. Uh, I'm glad to see him up. I'm glad to see U.S. guys linked to him. Although I'm a little hesitant because I think uh, Venezia kind of did the same thing, bringing in a bunch of Americans, and they're dead last in Syria. So uh, hopefully Leeds bring in some of the stronger names. It looks like they are. They're bringing in Brendan Aarons and Tyler Adams is linked. So uh, agree I with you. I see Tyler Adams there. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But I, I yeah, think could you imagine that? Uh, Calvin Phillips and Tyler Adams together. Oh, uh, dude, they wouldn't, they wouldn't solid. concede a goal. They wouldn't concede a goal all year. Yeah, they'd be super rock solid. Yeah. So I know I know that the uh, Venezia are going back down. But it's not I, – I can't say it's because of our American influence. Um, they really – they had two Americans on their team. They had Gianluca Busio, who played uh, about 2,000 minutes. Um, and then they had Tanner Tessman, who played about less than 700. They also brought in um, 
Nani played 300 minutes going again to the retirement league of Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they brought in, what's his face? The, uh, the youth player, uh, DeVry, Jack DeVry from, uh, from Philly. And he didn't even yeah. make an appearance. So um, can't really say that it failed that way. But I also think Tyler Adams and Brennan Aronson are a bit above those two right now in terms of just talent. a bit, <laughs> just, a, just bit. a bit, just a bit. <laughs> um, but I, I, like I said, I think Tyler is fit for the Premier League game. I think he'd be an absolute monster in that field, uh, like you said, with Calvin Phillips. And Brendan Aronson is just one of those exciting type of players. I fear that he turns into a little bit of a. Uh, Josh Sargent in where he gets put on the wing and has trouble to create and gets into a funk and people start doubting him and all that stuff. But uh, he needs to leave Salt at some point. <laughs> I, I don't think it's the worst spot for him to go to Leeds. And I think Leeds are also going to start looking for other players as well. Um, so they, they need a little bit of help all over the pitch. But I think Tyler Adams is a great start. So I'd be very, very interested to see that happen. Um, Let's talk a little bit before we move on about, uh, sorry, before we even go on to that. The real reason is that they had a, a Chelsea Loney on their team in Ethan Ampadu. This is Venezia, uh, Ethan Ampadu, who got them relegated because he couldn't keep balls out of the net. So, and Sergio Romero at 35. Oh, God. What yeah, Sergio Romero. This? Bro, this team is like, yeah, they're, they had three goalkeepers each get like, 1400 minutes or two goalkeepers get 1500 minutes and one get 500. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, they had it's, it's an interesting squad. <laughs> no, for sure. They had a ton of people over uh, over 30 years old, so not too much to uh, to write home about. Um, anyways, MLS's influence overseas. I know we've talked about it a little bit. You've seen some success, some failures. Are we moving in the right direction? Do you think? Yeah, I would say definitely. Uh, I think we still need a little bit more time. I think a great sign would be seeing Brendan Aronson and Tyler Adams go to Leeds and be successful. We need more guys to be successful coming from the league because we saw we, we saw Alfonso Davies do it, go to Bayern, and he blew up, and he was one of the top players in the world. We got to start doing that consistently now. We can't just be a, a one-hit wonder with Alfonso Davies. Let's keep guys like Aronson. Uh, we need them to continuously be successful, and then uh, we can get some credibility in the guys that we send out onto uh, onto Europe. So I, I hope that you know someone like John Luca Busio gets a move to maybe an, another team that's in Syria and can continue to develop, and uh, maybe eventually make that move like like. Anthony Robinson being rumored with AC Milan and like just missing out on that. Like he would have been league title winner this season. So, you know, yeah, I wanna, would have had to retire at 25. He would have had to retire at 25. Why? Yeah. yeah. Once, once you go to Italy, yeah, it's a retirement league. You have to oh, retire. Yeah, once yeah. You're True. Come on, Connor, stick with the slander. Gosh, it's not that. I hard. apologize. I'm sorry. No, don't. Anyways, one of the things that I'd like to do is sit down and kind of break down um, just the players who have moved overseas from from MLS over the last, you know, four or five seasons. Just kind of track their their in, in their influence. Uh, the Athletic did a really good article where you could see the number of players being sold has increased. Um, I mean, you're looking at 23 players versus. 16 players versus 17 players versus 16 players. And then it goes nine, eight, nine, five. So not a lot of people uh, are, we are, we're moving the right direction in terms of youth players getting sold, but you're right. We need somebody to break in and say, this player came from this league. We need Alfonso Davies, but bigger than like, not bigger, but more frequently. We need that consistently. Got to prove that it's not just a fluke with Davies. Got to prove that there's, there's consistently talent coming out of here. Right. The one thing that uh, uh, one of my Euro snob friends always always mentions is 
you can never be a good team if you keep selling your, your best players or a, a good lead, you keep selling your best players. I go, we have, we have seven to 10 years left before we are a legitimate top five league in the world. But it has to start by creating talent. And then I tried to explain to him salary caps and why we do all this stuff. And he didn't, it, it's going to take a few more lessons with him before you, he's on board. But um, there's a whole bunch that goes into that. Um, but I think, yeah, I would agree. We're moving in the right direction. We're selling more people. They now need to make an impact, right? Uh, the, the list that I have here, you've got Jefferson Soteldo at Tigris. Haven't heard anything about him. Eric Sorga. Haven't heard anything about him. Ignacio Alceda, I think he's got a few goals for Lugano. Theo Baer to Johnstone. Diego Valeri to Lanus. And then we get the big ones. Richie Larea to Nottingham Forest. Hasn't broken in yet. George Bellador made it Bay, uh, Bay, Bay Um Hasn't really broken through that either. Aaron Austin Trusty hasn't gotten to Arsenal yet, but he'll get there. Uh, Nicholas Figal to Boca Jr. I know he's been playing there. Atuesta to Palmeiras, haven't heard much about him. Riley McGree from Charlotte to Middlesbrough before he even stepped foot in the country. Love that they include that there. <laughs> Matt Turner Matt Turner to Arsenal, hasn't gotten there yet. Tejan Bieber to Club Bruges, did score a goal there, so he's starting to impress. Kevin Paredes hasn't broken through at Wolf, Wolfsburg. Daryl DK kind of going cold at Bromwich. And uh, Pepe going cold at Augsburg. Need somebody to go from our league and blow up. Now, I, I, and Brendan Aronson closest to it. Tyler Adams has done well, but Brendan Aronson, I think, is the closest player to say, I'm going to go to a massive league and be an absolute menace. Yeah, this is the a great opportunity way. here at Leeds. Yeah, and, and that, like I said, this could be, in five years, we can look back at this and say, literally, MLS makes the takes, right? I know we joke about that a lot, but that could be a massive thing here, right? If Jesse Marshall some of the best MLS players in the world and, and makes leads legit. And then the one striker that comes out of our, our league and blows him up and turns him into a 20 goal Premier League scorer, that, that puts us on the map.